And with that, we're going to move into our second breakout group. So the question is, do you guys can collectively think about what uh, is the number one unanswered question from this learning series that you have? Two of the questions fell into the battery itself. So one, when, when can we get a battery? <laughs> if, if we get a battery through this. And then how those batteries might work in inclement weather specifically in winter storms is that something that we need to be concerned about and then my personal question was how do we communicate with people that we have this resource once we get it has anyone thought about we, we're all in this course we're all doing this coursework to to understand like how to build a community how to set up a community how to set up a battery collective has anyone given any thought about how to set up a battery collective Yeah, I think so. I we recently set up a tool library in Lexington, Kentucky, where I live. It's pretty new. People are a lot like confused about what it is. Or I, I went to a art fair this weekend, and I was handing out I handed out like two hundred and fifty, just like quarter sheet flyers about the tool library, and people kept. They they thought it was too good to be true or didn't quite make sense to them and i think that the i think that an emergency battery works could live in the tool library as like an ongoing regular resource that people take advantage of for like parties or like screenings in the park movie screenings in the park or going camping or whatever they want to use off-grid power for but then also be available in times of emergency to be distributed equitably. And I think that the hard part is like figuring out what those decision making is going to be like, because we're going to have maybe like 10 batteries or something, and maybe 100 people, 200 people know about the tool library and need power. And we're going to figure out how to process those requests or like group people together, like we're talking about here. So anyway, I think that my personal feeling is that like a tool library, an equipment library, a library of things is a great home for kind of organizing the the battery collective overall that's a good idea lindy i'll take one from chat alice says one question was what are the various end of life solutions for the three types and the environmental and human act uh, impact toxicity etc can they be recycled so if i'm understanding the question correctly it's at the end of the life of the battery, you've used a battery 10 years, three years, five years, the battery no longer has charging capabilities. What do we do with the battery? Does anyone know like about lead acid batteries or AGM batteries or, or lithium batteries? What happens towards the end of their life? Eugene. Yeah, lead acid batteries and AGM batteries are virtually 80 to 90% recyclable. All of the lead inside, there's, there's an established industry to recycle these kind of batteries for many decades. And when you buy a new battery, you're discounted $20 or 20 to $40 if you return the old battery to the store where you buy the new one and they'll recycle it. They'll ship it off to get recycled. Now, lithium ion, it's made out of cobalt, which is what children are mining in Africa. And it's got some health effects the way it's mined so cheaply with no protection. Um, I just read an article yesterday, though, that in the laboratory, they're, they're starting to develop recycling methods for lithium ion batteries. It's not widespread on massive scale yet, but hopefully it's something that will, will be in the near future. Our main question was how exactly to make the batteries. We didn't have a clear understanding on how to do that. Um, does anyone have an understanding on how to make the batteries? I think that the question is more about how to make a backup battery, not the actual battery itself. Uh, anyone? Um, have any thoughts about that, how to make a backup battery? Or here's a question, the components that you might need to make a backup battery. 
I was going to answer your question. I think if you watch the video and you show the essentially the three components that go into the milk crate. Alice is absolutely correct. The video, yes, does uh, depict the components that are necessary to make the battery. I think we also shared a flyer on um, the components to make the battery as well. And we'll be diving deeper into that during our office hours. I know a bunch of y'all have already been building with them, but the footprint project, they both come and support with building up solar community support hub pieces and honoring what communities do and don't want being invited in, all these pieces. But they also come in and in our community, they came in and collaborated with local groups and we built solar generators ourselves, right? So they would come with the with all the bits and bobs, right? So there's the inverter. And if we buy that solar panel on market, it's seven or eight grand for what we would use at Community Hub. All the bits and bobs are like four to five grand. And so we do the few thousand dollars of connecting the wiring and learning, but then that also meant that we learned also how to not just build it, but how to maintain it. And then those solar generators stayed in community. But just as another group to build with. Thank you very much, Ann. Yeah, so one of the things that I will just, I'm gonna end with this and then I'm gonna pass it on to Kansas is that there are a lot of resources out there, tons of resources. So please hop online, hop on YouTube, just type in there, emergency battery. There'll be a video that shows you how to do everything step-by-step -step as well. Um, what those videos miss is the community aspect, is that self-governance aspect, is the aspect of how to build community around that and how to support community around that. It's fun to like hop in your garage and tinker with things. It's even more fun to hop in your garage and tinker knowing that it's going to support your community in a time of need or support yourself or support your family in a time of need. So making those connections is really what this course has been about and will continue to be about. But yes, we pull in those resources as well. We definitely encourage people to go out and get those resources.